Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about why I recommend narrower grip exercises uh, for people who have a history of shoulder problems. So let me put on my plus five out of weapon smithing, work on skill up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. All right. Uh, you guys have noticed that when you guys watch me train Brittany that all of her lat pull downs, even uh, pen blade rows, everything else are done no more than shoulder width. I actually have her with her lat pull downs, use the little V-bar handles. Uh, even pen blade rows, she doesn't go wider than shoulder width. Actually, I don't either uh, for pen blade rows because for me that's a leverage thing. But I always say in those training videos, I do this because she has a history of shoulder issues due to being a hairdresser, a makeup artist, all of that stuff that she does. Uh, that because of that, she's had some shoulder problems as a result of doing it. That and before that, she had a corporate job where she was on a computer all day for sometimes 12, 13 hours a day. So, that being said, she's got certain issues with her shoulders and to work around that, that's what we do. We do all of that stuff with a narrow grip, even her bench press is done with a closed grip. Uh, and I even recommend to most power lifters training with a closed grip bench press most of the year. And there are a lot of coaches out there, really good coaches, who do recommend the same thing. Now, a lot of people would say, why? What's the big deal? Uh, the, the big deal is that when you start going wider on exercises, let's say the bench press. If you're out here on a wide bench press you know you're putting extra stress on the shoulders what you're going to find is that it's easier to have rotator cuff injuries it's easier to injure your shoulder over time with a wider grip now a lot of people are like well you know the wider grip lets you lift more weight it's going to build more muscle it's better for your chest in the closed grip so you shouldn't do that but the argument i would make is that no it's not the reason bodybuilders came up with that myth is not based upon science or biomechanics. It's based on the fact that most people are stronger on the wide grip, right? So if you're stronger, you must be using more muscles. And with it wider, it must work the chest more because that's why you're stronger. The chest is more involved. When it's not, the reason you can lift more weight is because it shortens the range of motion. In other words, a wider grip out here, you don't have to move the bar as far as you do here. Look at the difference. It's not that the chest is doing less work on a closed grip and the triceps are doing more. It's that everything's working harder. You have to move the weight a much longer distance. For some people, it could be as much as five, six, seven inches difference. You're doing more work. So therefore, if you're doing more work, it's harder to use the same weight. In other words, if you're having to move an exercise six inches further, uh, 200 pounds, you won't be able to do the same number of reps on the two exercises because one of them does less work than the other on every rep with a given weight. So you're gonna find for most people, they're gonna be a little stronger on the wider grip, in some cases a lot stronger. Uh, it's not because of chest involvement, it's because you're doing more work. Uh, so we kind of come to another point with presses there. If you can do more work on the targeted muscles with less weight, in other words, your chest and triceps have to work harder because you're moving it through a fuller range of motion and it doesn't put the same stress on the shoulders uh, due to the angles, you're also using a slightly lighter weight, probably 5% less weight to do the same amount of work. That puts less impact on the joints themselves. So in other words, your shoulders get less beat up because you're not putting as heavy of a weight on there. Let's say you're doing five rep sets, eight rep sets, whatever you happen to do. If that's what you're working with, then you're going to use a slightly lighter weight on the close grip for the given number of reps because you're doing more work with each rep. So you're either going to have to uh, cut the reps down or you're going to have to cut the weight down. So there's also that factor in addition to the, the differences in angles on it as far as the pressing goes, because pressing in general tends to be relatively hard on the shoulders over time when large amounts of it are done. It can put stress on them. That stress doesn't have to cause injury uh, because oftentimes your body is adapting to and healing that stress, but it does put a lot of stress on there. So that makes it a valuable tool for doing that. Now with pulling, uh, it comes to a different thing because a lot of people, when you narrow the grip on pulls, uh, some people are stronger, They're particularly like I've talked about in the past, the chin-up versus the pull-up chin-ups. Most people are a little stronger, even though you're moving the weight a further distance. And that's because the biceps themselves add to the load more, and while the back works about the same amount, and therefore you end up being a little bit stronger on it. But when it comes to pulling, pulling itself is very rarely bad for your shoulder joints, uh, particularly if you take a neutral grip or anything in close inside shoulder width, you're gonna find that most pulling doesn't aggravate the shoulders at all. But when you go wider, it sometimes can. So the difference here, it doesn't matter that you're a little bit stronger with the narrower because pulling itself 
doesn't tax the shoulders usually as much as far as the rotator cuffs, the glenoids, things like that. It doesn't tax them as much as pushing does. So it's not as big of a deal. The only time we run into problems with pulling is that, again, going very wide, again, wide grip pull-ups, wide grip lat pull-downs. That stuff can, again, irritate, aggravate, cause inflammation in the shoulder joints. Uh, so again, if you've got a history of shoulder problems, you need to be doing all your pulling in narrow. And again, I recommend no wider than shoulder, shoulder width. You can do rows, you can do pin lay rows, you can do pull-ups with that. Uh, again, but pull-ups though, for most people, you're going to do, probably do better to do a neutral grip. If you're going to do a pull-up instead of a chin-up at all, I'm generally going to lean in the direction of the neutral grip. Uh, it's, it's just overall better for overall muscle recruitment. It's a better exercise. So, again, the narrow grip in general is going to help you there. Now, a lot of people are going to chime in and say, well, there's a lot of top-level Olympic lifters who do use wide grips on all these exercises, and they don't have shoulder problems, and that's true. Because when we talk about a higher risk and more irritation, some people are going to be more resilient to that. And the thing that you've got to remember, a lot of those champions don't have problems, but a lot of them do after they retire. But that's the other thing. People who are very prone to shoulder problems, who just are genetically predispositioned for that, which is a pretty big chunk of the population. A lot of you out there have shoulder problems from lifting a hell of a lot lighter weight than any Olympic lifter, don't you? Yeah? So you're predisposed to it. People who are predisposed to those problems don't make it in Olympic lifting. So you've got to factor that in too. It's not that those lifts can't really uh, cause those problems because they absolutely can over time. It's that people who are predisposed to those problems will never make it through an Olympic lifting program. They won't get very far in the sport. So again, those people can't do all this snatch grip stuff and they can't be like Dmitry Koklov doing ultra wide behind the neck presses with 200 pounds and stuff. Uh, it's just not going to happen for a lot of people's shoulder structure and that's uh, the factor as well. So you've got to factor in that some people are going to be more resilient to shoulder injuries than others. And if you happen to be one of those people and you choose to train in that way or you need to for your sport, then by all means carry on. But if you're someone who doesn't need to train wide for your sport and you don't know if you're predisposed to shoulder problems or not, you might not want to take the risk because you're just less likely to develop these problems if you do most of these exercises with a narrower grip. Uh, you're going to find you're going to get just as big, just as strong, in some cases bigger and stronger, while using a relatively narrow grip on your pushing and pulling. Again, no, not going out really outside of shoulder width. There's no need to do it. You can build just as much muscle and strength at shoulder width as you can going wide. So there's no need to do so outside of sport-specific applications, uh, considering it's not a disadvantage in any way to do so. So again, even though a lot of people are going to be very resilient to shoulder problems, if you're not competing in something uh, that might require you to do so, do you really need to take the risk? Probably not. It's just easier not to. It's safer, and it's not like you're at a disadvantage for doing so. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.